So um, we wanted to ask you, how did you find your life at the college kind of day to day and as a whole? So I think um, I had a couple of phases at the college. So there was the junior school I joined it when I was 12, a senior school, and then the kind of the sixth form that you guys are in. And I think junior and senior school in particular, that the quality of the teaching, I don't think you realise at the time, but it's really good. It, it was, yeah. um, you, you felt it was really intense. We had um, longer hours than my friends who are in the public, you know, in comprehensive education. So, you know, I don't know if it's still the same, but you know, staying yeah. in, working until 5.45 some days and, you know, on the Saturday as well. Um, so, yeah, there was a, seemed to be a, we seem to do a lot more than other people. And that really puts you in good stead because it's quite intense. Um, and I think right the way through to GCSE for me, it was really, really impressive. Um, and I, I'll, I'll always go back to that in my mind because it was the foundation for everything. Um, now, interestingly, because the... It, when we moved into the sixth form, and I'm sure it's changed now, uh, but the sixth form was a bit trickier um, because the teaching was probably at the same level. And there was one moment when we actually had a student protest that we weren't being taught enough. So we intervened uh, because on one subject, we went to the headmaster and said, there's no way we can cover enough of the set text in time. So you think about, you know, student protests being about, you know, cool stuff from the you know, 1960s and sit downs. And stuff. No, it was actually asking for more work. <laughs> I thought it was brilliant. Um, but I was, a, I was in the, um, I was a day boy. So I, I was in Sutton House, which meant I'd have my kind of college life and then I'd go home. And I think for my character, I think that was best. Because uh, do, you, do you both board or are you? No, we're no. day people as well. Yeah, day people. So. I, think it's, I think it's easier. I think it's just easier. And, it's, and it means that you're, you don't have that perspective of your whole life being the college. Uh, so it's quite nice yeah. to kind of leave it. <laughs> I don't know. So I think that was, so I used it to, um, I used the weekends to, to, I got a job in a local supermarket in Sainsbury's up at Thorley uh, and just tried to get a bit of money together and had a bit of an outside life, which I think could be quite tricky if you're a boarder, but as a day people, it was, it was really good. Yeah, great. No, that sounds really cool. Um, we also wanted to know what were your favourite subjects at the college? Uh, a random one I think was Latin. I really liked Latin, which just sounds really spotty, but um, I, I came at age 12 and some of the other, well, it was all boys at the time up until the sixth form. I think it's girls through the school now, isn't it? Is that right? Boys and girls. Yeah, all the way through, yeah. That's much better. But anyway, it was all boys. Um, <laughs> and when I came in, it was quite competitive and the, a few people, had, well, most of the class had done Latin before. But I took to it and just really liked it. I don't know why. I think I was probably quite good at languages. Uh, so Latin probably first, um, and then probably something like German. And that was mainly due to having, you know, the best teacher. Uh, and I think we all remember a good teacher when we get older. So yeah, probably German and Latin. Yeah, um, following on from that, our next question is actually, who was your favorite teacher? And is there anyone that you remember even now? Uh, the best, so the best one was Mr. Ladd, Mr. O.D. Ladd. Uh, he was the German teacher. He was so eccentric. He was, he was quite strict. Um, so, you know, if you didn't do what you're supposed to, uh, you'd know about it. Um, but he was so funny that he'd managed to inspire you to do better. So you'd want to impress and do well. Um, but at the same time, he'd and then he'd celebrate that in a funny way. So he'd, you know, get you to, when you're learning verbs and things, to sing it in the class, he'd do it in a hilarious way. And, th and that just sticks with you. So I think for me, Mr. Ladd was probably my favorite. Um, we also had someone called Mr. Parsons who did music. Uh, and he was just, I think he was very young and he was more like the students. So he was probably more fun. Uh, we were part of like a dance group, a dance band. So I played the clarinet as a music scholar. That's why I was, that's why we could afford to go to the college actually, because we got a scholarship. Um, but he was just great fun. But I think that wasn't about the teaching. That was just about fun. So yeah, I'd say Mr. Ladd definitely in German. Who must be who must be dead now? I tried to find out, you know, what's happened to him, and I couldn't find it. So maybe through the alumni society, be able to find out a bit more what happened to him. Yeah. Um. So you're in Sutton House. What was your uh, favourite memory? So can I be a bit cheeky? I was in Monk Jones House first. I don't know if that's still there, which was in the junior. Yeah. School. Yeah. So I, I I remember playing um, around the world table tennis in there. Uh, and it basically just dominated all our breaks. 
So you'd be studying and then you'd all go and go back and play table tennis. And I don't know why that was fun, but it was. Um, Sun House, I don't know. I never felt that same kind of base or connection to, to Sun House. I think maybe because it was a day house and uh, yeah. it was a more place to be. But do you remember, I mean, I'm sure the dining hall is still there, the hexagonal shaped dining hall. Um, yeah. yeah. Is that still there? So rather yeah. than the house, my favourite kind of memory was I helped um, manage, manage, uh, run a little bookshop and stationery store in one of the rooms along the, along the side. So before lunchtime, kids could go in and, you know, buy, buy a book or buy some stationery from us. And I think that was actually, you know, quite entrepreneurial of me to, to be the main kind of person behind that. And I, yeah, that was, a, that was a good memory, setting something up for fun and, you know, making it work. Yeah. Um, on the topic of memories, is there like a life lesson or a specific memory that you've taken with you from the college that you still kind of utilise in your adult life? I think confidence is the most important thing. So I, I remember that teaching and it's the academic side, I mean, of confidence. I came out of there knowing that I was, you know, it was good enough. You know, I got good exam results, didn't get stellar ones, but pretty good. Um, but I got there because of that teaching and that gives you so much confidence that you're actually a good person. Uh, and that means that when you go away and you do other things, you've got that inbuilt confidence. I found people didn't have that, that confidence necessarily uh, from other schools. So that was really important. Um, I didn't quite get on very well socially, I'd say. I was a bit of a spotty teenager. Um, uh, I'm also um, in the LGBT community. So, you know, growing up then as a, as a young gay teenager was quite difficult. Uh, so I didn't come out with the social confidence that I needed, but I feel like I kind of got that at university. So uh, the college effectively gave me the grounding that said, yeah, you're quite good, off you go. Uh, and then I kind of developed on the social side later on. And um, what inspired you to want to go into a political career? So it's a bit embarrassing. Uh, I read a novel by someone called Jeffrey Archer, um, who's, a, who's a terrible politician, awful, <laughs> um, but he's a good author, uh, is, in, is in writing kind of accessible stuff. So I was about 12 or 13 and I read a book he'd wrote called First Among Equals. And I remember being in the garden and just being totally, you know, sucked in by this book. Uh, and it changed what I thought about things. And suddenly I saw this kind of, that kind of ignited the passion in me to go, oh, right, now I get what all this stuff is on the news. It's basically about, you know, clashing of ideas and uh, how do you get something done in life? How do you change the world? Um, and I got really, you know, who's up, who's down. Uh, it was all really interesting. And that inspired me to have a look uh, at politics. Um, and I remember going to the careers advisor at Stortford College I can't remember his name, um, but he was going through everyone's careers and everyone was like, oh, you know, it wasn't quite so asinine as, you know, I want to be an astronaut or whatever, but, you know, it was pretty standard stuff. And I went in and said, I, I want to go and study politics. And he kind of put his glasses on the table and went, why on earth would you want to do that? Uh, and But he helped me find out which university was the best um, to go and study that kind of topic. And it was, so I was passionate about it. And I think he reacted quite well to that and helped me on my way. How did your um, internship at number 10 help you get more into your politics career? Well, I don't think there's anything better. So if you think about it, a young, a, you know, young guy goes to university, studies politics. So you've got your academic stuff. You've, you've, you've studied it properly and you've got um, qualifications that show you know what you're talking about. Uh, you also get involved when you go to university. You'll probably get involved in your, if you do go to university, I'm assuming you do, but you may not. If you do, you get involved in your student union, get involved a little bit in your own student politics, maybe, if that's your passion. And that's what I did. So then working out what to do next is quite difficult. Um, and they had an internship scheme at the time for five or six kind of graduates to go and work in number 10. Um, the scheme's now long gone. So there's like probably about five or six years worth of people who got it. But I'll always be able to trade on that. I worked on, basically worked on the Prime Minister's folder that he uses at Prime Minister's question time. Uh, you know, the big folder he puts in the dispatch box. There's actually two folders. There's a massive folder, which has everything in it that we think he could be asked. Um, it's like that thick, which he takes to bed at night, uh, the night before to really gen up on stuff. And what he takes the next day is the kind of fleet of foot, what are the three things you need to know. Um, so having basically worked across government. There I was, what, um, obviously much older than you two, but there I was, because I'd done my postgrad, probably about 25, 
and there I was kind of collating these things that the Prime Minister would read out. I mean, I can't think of anything more, you know, central to politics than being at the centre of British politics. It was for six months. Uh, and I'll always trade on it because it means now if I go to a meeting at, um, at number 10, I'm not daunted by that. A lot of people are. Uh, you take a small business owner into number 10 and they get a bit quiet. And it's like, no, it's fine. It's just an office. Um, don't, don't be shy. Um, so, yeah, I'll always trade on that. Um, it was just fundamental. Um, so you represent small businesses. Has COVID affected you in any way? Uh, personally, yes. So I'm working from home the whole time because uh, I can do my job from home. Um, I go in probably to the office every couple of weeks or so just to make sure it's there, if anything. Uh, but it's, you know, everything's moved online. My organisation is that I work for my employer is the Federation of Small Businesses. So it's looking after, you know, the 5.9 million small business self-employed across the country. So they are in real trouble. Um, so we've lobbied for loads and loads of support, which is great, but it's changed how we work. So my job's changed. You know, I had to, you know, I normally have my top 10 issues thing I go and lobby on, well, that gets thrown away. And you have to go in and lobby for as much financial support for small business as we could get. And, you know, we ended up with nearly 200 billion of it, which is just astonishing. And that's kept a lot of people going, but now it's all shifting. We've got to lobby on, you know, when will the recovery happen and how can you help small businesses be part of it? Because it's not gonna be your big corporates where um, the big job growth is gonna happen after people are made redundant in the current crisis and come out of it. So if you like, there's a difference between small businesses that have been in real trouble and then us as an organization where we've never been more relevant and important. So that's changed my job and got us lots more profile. So um, we also wanted to ask what are your ambitions for the future? It's difficult because I've never been, I don't know if you've got a plan for your careers. I mean, if you've got, I mean, Michael Heseltine famously had an envelope where he said, you know, by 20, this, 30, that, 40, the other. And I've never thought that's a good idea because it's, it's a bit debilitating if you don't make it. So <laughs> I've always thought just grab every opportunity. Um, so I, I haven't got a plan for future. I think what I'd like to do is maybe become, because I love politics. I never want to lose the kind of that, that kind of aspect of what I do, but I do love it when it mixes with other things. So, um, you know, I've got a policy team that look at ideas of public policy. I've got public affairs kind of lobbying team that I used to be part of a media team, a comms team, public publications team, you know, devolved team. So you have all these kind of different people with expertise and real sparkiness about what they do. And what's beautiful is when it all comes together and you all work together on something. And I think that's what I'd like to do next. So maybe be chief exec of something small. Uh, maybe it's a small membership organization that needs a bit of help. Uh, but yeah, that's my ambition next is to maybe step up one kind of final rung and uh, I mean, I'm obviously I'm, I think I'm probably the same age as some of your kind of pupils parents now. So I've still got another two or three big jobs in me, I think. I hope. Um, do you have any advice for us and the current sixth form? Ah, oh, so much, but I don't want to patronise you. I think, um, <laughs> I don't know. But the first is if anyone's different or feeling different, like if you've got one of your you know, your, your friends who just is a bit withdrawn or a bit shy, do try and do something about that. You know, try and make sure every, all of your colleagues, I say colleagues, it's not colleagues, is it? I don't what you call them. All your fellow pupils, just make sure everyone feels part of it because there can be, it can be isolating. Uh, and I think it's hard to spot that. And I think nowadays the school has probably got quite a good approach to mental health and bullying that it certainly didn't have back then. Um, and that's great. But you kind of need to look after each other a lot. So that was my first thing is actually thinking about as you go through the sixth form, because I had to kind of look after each other. Um, but the second thing is just basically just to grab every opportunity you see. So as you think about your career, as you think about, you know, which university to go through, um, you know, just, just see what clicks. And if you feel ever that it's a bit like a cookie cutter approach, like, um, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do, just ignore that and work out, you know, what makes you tick? What makes you passionate? What do you enjoy? And how do you incorporate that into you, what you choose for, you know, uh, higher or further education and your career next? Just And then just wait and see and grab every opportunity there is. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Um, 
did you make lifelong friends at the college and on the topic of careers did they follow similar careers to you or was it different different things no I think because I did that in that I see it's three phases I kind of lost friends from the college who moved away either at the end of junior school or the end of senior school uh, I kept in touch with a few of those and then I think I didn't I, you know I really enjoyed those first two phases of the school less so the end uh, so I don't, didn't have I didn't come away with lots of great friendships at the very end. Interestingly, then of course, Facebook arrives. Um, after I, you know, my job is like um, chief lobbyist and a media, media spokesman. So I do quite a lot of interviews. And I think a couple of them saw me on the interviews and they're thinking, hang on, you know, where's that, that kind of spotty, quiet kid? That's him, isn't it? Um, so suddenly on Facebook, everyone started to send friendship requests on Facebook. So all these people that I didn't really like, um, suddenly there we are all connected and it's like, okay, you didn't like me at all like 20 years ago, um, but that's fine. So I haven't really made huge, great friendships, they're Facebook friendships. Um, but when I find out what they've done in their careers, what is interesting is they've done something totally different to me. They've mostly stayed in and around Hertfordshire, in and around the college. They may have got jobs in London they commuted to, uh, but they've created families around Hertfordshire. They've stayed quite local. Um, and that wasn't something I ever considered. I kind of, I kind of wanted to develop and change and I wanted to, you know, I wanted to be far enough away from my parents. They couldn't just turn up on the door, <laughs> not so far away. They couldn't come and help if I needed to. So I went to Hull University and that's because it's one of the best for politics, but it means that there's a three hour drive. So you don't have your mum and dad turning up on your door, but you also aren't so far away that you can't get help if you need it. And that was kind of very different to what everyone else did. And they've all stayed local, which is quite something. Um, and lastly, if you could sum up the college in just a few words, what would they be? Um, I would say high quality education. Uh, it's a, a maybe even a great springboard for what's next. But it's not, you know, you always think about it. You'll always come back to it. You'll come back to your, to your friends. You'll come back to memories that you created there. But it's really about what's next. What does that give you the bounce to do? Because uh, you've been given this great privilege of a really good education. And the question is going to be, how are you going to use it? What are you going to use it for? Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time and for speaking to us. No yeah, problem. thank you. Same with Kitty said, yeah. Have you got Thanks any your time? No problem at all. Have you got any follow up or anything that didn't quite, you didn't quite understand or? No, it was all no, like really, really great. interesting. And yeah. where are you, where, where are you going to be off to? Where are you off to after? Are you upper six, do you say, or lower six? Lower six. Lower six. We've got another so year after this, obviously. I don't know if you're smart. So are you are you <laughs> are you um working out your universities and stuff now or is it too early? I've I've, um, I've got an idea for Alex first. Yeah. Oh, say, say, say that again, say I didn't quite catch that. Go on, Sage, you go first. Oh, oh I've got an idea of what I want to do in the universities in the um with like what I want to go to, but Obviously, it's quite, it's a year and a half off, so I'm looking at like Leeds, maybe, or somewhere like that. I want to do media and communication, I don't want to do a media and communications course, so I need to look into it more, but Leeds is sort of the one that I'm thinking. Yeah, it's a good uni, I know Leeds, I remember Leeds, not far from Hull either, but, and how about, how about you, Kitty? Um, I want to do law, so I'm looking at unis in London, so kings or imperial if i get the grades fingers crossed um but yeah something like that i'm really interested in it's definitely worth uh, i don't know if you've done this uh, a little visit so i had a guy above me in the year above me called stuart who i was a good mate with and he went to hull so when i was like i'm looking at hull can i come up and he said yeah yeah come up stay and he i remember he took me clubbing to this terrible club and i had no <laughs> idea why he took me there like um really low grade nightclub I was thinking, oh, I don't think this is quite what I like, but eventually I, I did. So um, I like to help. So do, do, if you get the chance to go and have a look, maybe not on an official open day either, go up on your own. Um, yeah. And then you can almost try and get an intro to the department as well, which is, then they see you. So I actually got a lower offer. I got offered um, three Cs, even though I was up for three Bs and normal was three Bs. So that gave me a bit of an insurance in case I didn't make it. Uh, which was very helpful because they thought, well, he's he's bothered. He's he likes us. Um, yeah. I don't know that still works now. No, that's really interesting. Thank you for that. Yeah, thank Good you. Time.
no problem at all.